Hi, Ross. How are you doing today? Yeah, not bad. You? I'm very good. So just before we start the interview, I would like to ask you what exactly you, you do for Global Work and Travel, if you can explain to us a little bit. Yeah, definitely. So I, I've been for Global now for seven years now. So I started uh, in sales and I worked my, myself up to team leader. And now recently I've been promoted to general manager. So Basically, I direct and oversee other staff members just to make sure that, I guess, the, the daily operations align with the vision of the company. I manage the, the customer service aspect of the organization. I, I do the training, the hiring. Um, so, yeah, I do a bit of everything, really. Okay. So, today we're going to talk about the working holiday trip. I've done two of them myself. I went to Australia and I went to New Zealand. And I can honestly say that it was the best time of my life. I had a really good experience. But uh, many awesome. youngsters want to do uh, this kind of trip. Some are scared. And can you explain to them a little bit what is a working holiday trip? Yeah, definitely. So a working holiday is basically where people that either have graduated or they just want a bit of a change work and travel overseas. So depending on where they go, um, it's up to two years. So essentially it's where they work to support themselves, fund their travels and just, just do something fun, something different, a change of scenery uh, and just travel uh, and earn money to support themselves. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> have you done it before as well? Have you done it before? Have you tried it? No, I've, I've never done a work and holiday myself. I, I've been to Australia. I've been to Canada. Uh, I used to live in Portugal, so I've done a lot of traveling, but I've never done a, a work and, and travel trip. But when you went to Australia and New Zealand, did you did you work there or did you just go yeah, on a holiday? Yeah, I went there and I just bought a visa and just went without nothing. And uh, that's why a company like Global Work and Travel, I think it's, it's really good. Because people who go by awesome. themselves, like me, we struggle for at least a month for to find a job and losing quite Definitely. a lot of money as well. You're probably losing more money than when you go by yourself. I think that when you're using a company that will help you with all the process and stuff. Definitely. It, it can be tricky going by yourself. And don't get me wrong, a, a lot of people are successful doing it independently, but going to a company like ours, you just save time, you save money, and it's stress-free. We just make it easy. And as you know, you can only get this visa once in your lifetime, so you want to yeah. make sure you do it the right way, and, and that's, what, that's what we do. We make sure that it's done the right way. Exactly. So Global Work and Travel will help uh, the, the people to, to get their visa. Can you explain to us a little bit more the support that you offer to, to people? Yeah, so the, the visas are, are pretty straightforward. Um, we can't help our travelers apply for the visas directly just because it has to be done online on, on the government's website, depending on if they're going to Australia, Canada or New Zealand. However, we help them step by step to ensure that they're applying for it at the right time. They're submitting the, the correct documents and, and we have a team that will ensure that they do it the right way and ensure that they can get it as long as they follow the, our guidelines. Yeah. Is it a support by phone as well? Can they call you when they are in New Zealand or Australia and ask for your support? Um, so if they're already in the country, uh, our, our trips are more for travellers that are booking six to 12 months in advance. Uh, yeah. Obviously, depending on where they want to go, for example, Canada, the, the visa can take up to six months. Uh, Australia, New Zealand, uh, pre-pandemic, the visa would take a couple of weeks where now... The visas obviously are currently closed. They're, they're not issuing yeah. visas due to, to border close, closures. So most of our travelers are booking um, for Australia and New Zealand. They're booking for after June 2022, where yeah. Canada, uh, most of our travelers are still booking for this year just because the visas are now open. But uh, it is a long process. And we have a step-by-step -step guide that they can follow via email. Uh, but we help our travelers over the phone as well if they need that extra assistance to, um, and we've got a team to help them. What about the US? The US, so, yeah. So can they apply oh, now for US? Can they apply now for US or do they have to wait next year as well? It depends where they're from. So, for example, British travelers can't enter uh, the US at the moment due to the pandemic. Um, 
but most of our trips require at least six to 12 months time to plan just because the more time we have the, the, the benefit it just benefits the customer because we have more time to organize a visa we have more time to help them plan the next steps get all their documents ready um, set up the interviews with our partner employers help them book flights and travel insurance so we, we asked for up to six to 12 months and the pandemic is is slowly fading away per se so <laughs> things are slowly starting to get easier i know obviously we spoke earlier that not so much where you're your whole base but yeah I'm in, in from the malaysia and it's a bit of a nightmare at the moment <laughs> yeah but things in the uk are looking up australia not so much vaccine but our travelers are exempt to travel um we have so many americans leaving america and, and traveling into uh, all over the world so in the travel industry things are, are picking up and, and looking more positive now awesome so ma many youngsters want to go abroad but they don't really know like um, how, ma how many uh, hours they're gonna do per week or how much they're gonna get paid can, can you maybe tell us a little bit more about this yeah, definitely. So we, uh, we're partnered with over 1,200 host organizations all over the world. And we, um, we hire travelers and we get them short-term seasonal work. So it's nothing too career-focused. It, it could be working in a ski resort in Canada to work in uh, an island resort in Australia. So it, it really depends on the customer's experience and what they want to do overseas. Um, generally speaking, we, we get them full-time jobs, um, so up to 40 hours a week. Uh, and I think a lot of perks going to an organization like us is a lot of our partners provide staff accommodation, which is which is really oh, handy uh, so, they, so they can live where, where they're working. Um, but generally speaking, yeah, it, it's up to 40 hours on, on average. Yeah. And the salary can go from... Okay. Yeah, so it... it Again, it, it depends on, on where they're going. Uh, obviously, it's always minimum wage and above. Yeah. It depends on, on their experience, what work they've done in the past. Some contracts include accommodation. Um, so th they may pay rent out of their wage or it's already included in their contract. Um, but these trips are designed for our travelers to earn more than enough money to support themselves while they're doing these trips. So for example, if they're in Canada, they work in a, in a ski resort that may include staff accommodation, may get ski passes included so that on their days off, they can go skiing, oh, awesome. they can go snowboarding, and, and, and that's the, the benefit of doing it. So we require a minimum commitment of four months with the same employer. Yeah. Oh. Um, and a lot of them do four to six months. So they work four to six months. And they want to for six months. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, not necessarily. A lot of our travelers do four to six months do a bit of traveling and then when they're ready, we can get them other interviews with other employers and they can do another four to six month contract in a different part of the country. So it's just knowing that we're there to help them step by step and it just gives them that extra sense of security. All right. I know that uh, in Australia, for example, when you do food picking or something like this for more than three months, you can apply for uh, another visa. You can extend your visa. Is it possible to do this in Canada or maybe on with you in Australia or New Zealand? Yeah, great question. So yeah, in Australia, um, it's a 12-month visa to start off with. If they extend it for an extra year, then yeah, they have to do 88 days farm work or regional work, which we can assist uh, our travelers with. In yeah. Canada, it is automatically a 24-month visa. So it's automatically two years. Right. Uh, so it's not farm work is not that popular. I think Australia, yeah. obviously farm work is, is abundant out there and, and so many people do it. Um, so yeah, we can assist our travel with, with the support um, to, to get that type of work, yeah. Awesome, and always to remember that it's from 18 to 35 years old, yeah? Yeah, depending which passport they hold and where they're from, certain countries have different age restrictions. Yeah. Um, so depending where they're from or where they're going to, it's, it's usually 18 to 30 or 18 to 35. Um, but there is a eligibility on our website, a calculator where they can see if they qualify by just putting their age and passport and it'll let them know if, if they qualify. Awesome. So I had a friend who contacted me the, the other day as she wanted to apply for working on a visa or a trip to Australia. And she didn't want to go alone. She was a bit, a bit scared because she's very young and she wants to go with a friend. Is it possible to yeah. organize a trip with your friend?
Definitely. Yeah, we send lots of uh, groups of friends, partners, uh, and obviously we send a lot of people that do go on their own. So we understand it can be quite nerve wracking traveling independently. But if you're if someone wants to travel with their friend, we just ask for a bit more time to plan the trip just because it's two people that want to live in the same area. Um, we, we can't guarantee that they will be working together just because from an employee's perspective, a lot of employees don't want to hire group of friends working for the same uh, business. But what we can do is ensure that they go on the same plane together, that they fly out together, that they're living in the same area, working in the same area. So we just ask for that extra time to ensure that we can plan everything together to okay. ensure that when they arrive in Australia, that everything's aligned. But for travelers that are going on their own and don't have friends that want to do this with them, we recommend just go on your own. In a way, it's, it's the best thing to do, travel independently, just because no one's holding you down. And yeah, exactly. I'll say, yeah, and I'll say 95% of our travelers do go on their own, and we connect them with so many other like-minded people that are traveling on their own. And you just meet so many more friends, you push yourself out of your comfort zone, and you end up just doing what, what you want to do. So we, we highly recommend traveling independently yeah. if you don't have a friend. Yeah, I've done it myself, and I've met so many people that are still in touch today. This is a great yeah. thing of doing like a working holiday trip is you meet so many people and it's an awesome experience. Definitely. I had an awesome experience doing this. I wish I could Definitely. do it again, but I'm over 35 now and I can't. No, it's too <laughs> late. I think it's, <laughs> that's one, one of the regret is that they say I should have done it when, when I was younger. And this is what we tell our customers, that it's never going to be the right time and you'll never, ever regret traveling. Like no, travel, as you know, you've done a lot of traveling yourself. It's just you meet so many people, it boosts your confidence, it boosts your CV, and you just get to see the world. So do it. Yeah. Um, I have another question. Some people, for example, they don't speak much English and they want to do it as well. Is it possible for them to find jobs as well? Um, yes and no, like we need an element that they need, we need to understand them, um, especially because our partners, uh, we, we have hundreds and hundreds of travelers that uh, register each month and our partners are the ones that pick who they hire and they have to have Skype interviews. We need to obviously organize everything over the phone. So they do have to have a good element of, of understanding, um, of English for us to be able to, 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 to get, get them on board. So I think it's another common question. It's like, do you provide the flight or is it not included with the, the process? How does it work? Yeah, great question. So flights and travel insurance, they're not included in our trip package costs just because we send travelers from all over the world. However, we've got a travel concierge team that will assist our travelers with finding affordable and flexible flights. Yeah. Um, especially in the pandemic where things keep changing, it is so important that travelers book their flights and understand that if things do close down again or they need a bit more time to, um, to save up or plan the trip, by booking flexible flights, you can always push your trip back. Um, and say with travel insurance, you need comprehensive travel insurance. So, yeah, we have a team that can assist our travelers uh, okay. book it or they can book it independently. It's, it's up to them. Is the insurance compulsory or they don't need to have an insurance. Some people don't want to take insurance when they travel, or is it compulsory when you apply for the visa? It is. It is. Uh, it's not compulsory when you apply for the visa, but when you like going to a company like ours, we, we need our travelers to have travel insurance. And I think in the next few years, it's going to be compulsory anyway for people to travel into, into countries. It, it might it might be a requirement we have to show at the airport, but you don't want to go to the other side of the world and, and not have insurance, especially if you're skiing in Canada and you're more yeah, prone to accidents. Yeah, right, sure. yeah. <laughs> exactly. So it, it's very important that our travelers are insured. And if you want to go through a big organization like ours, we, we, they have to be insured. Yeah, it's highly recommended. It's highly recommended. 100%, yeah. So I think it's another common question. For example, let's say the person is going to go to uh, Australia. She's going to work for six months. And then she's going to want to travel to Australia, maybe go to New Zealand and come back to Australia again. Is it possible to do this or is it you have to stay in the country? 
Yeah, great question. So I think a lot of our travellers do do that. So once you set foot in the country, for example, if you're going to Australia, um, the government visa starts as soon as you arrive in Australia. Now, it's up to the traveller if they want to travel. Like I said earlier on, they can do a four to six month contract in Australia and then travel around Australia for two months, go to Asia, go to New Zealand. That's what we encourage our travellers to do. You want to make the most of it. But they have to keep in mind that the visa does not pause while they're traveling. So if they work four months, travel for two months and then come back to Australia, they've only got six months remaining on yeah. that visa. Um, so we, we highly recommend it. Or what a lot of our travelers do is they work a year in Australia and then save up and then travel to Asia, go to New Zealand. And then a lot of people end up doing a second work and holiday trip and then start off and, and do another 12 months in, in New Zealand. So we, we assist so many people. They, they, they tell us they only want to do six months in Australia and come back home. And then three years later, they're still traveling through us and, and never <laughs> want to come back home, as you can imagine. So we are there to help them step by step. All right, cool. Um, recently, someone asked me, we talked about it before, but can they book now? They, do, they, they can wait for next year. They can still book for... Um, package now yeah for the working holiday trip now yeah definitely so we we usually ask for at least six to 12 months notice um obviously as i mentioned earlier on australia new zealand borders are still closed and we do have a bit of a backlog of travelers waiting to arrive so for new bookings most of our travelers for australia and new zealand they're booking for June onwards next year but we take bookings up until 2023 anyway oh, so wow. the more time they give us, uh, it'll just benefit them because we have more time to, to plan the trips yeah and how much would it cost for let's say a working holiday trip to Australia or New Zealand how, how much is it a little bit so the the visa or the, uh, the, the trip, the, trip package? The, 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 the package that you offer how much would it cost yeah. So may, many people want to book a uh, working holiday trip, but they don't really know what is it included and how much does it cost. What, what would be the average cost for a working holiday trip, etc. to Australia? Perfect. So uh, in, in dollars, um, it's just under two thousand dollars. So it's one nine nine five, and that's Australian for minimum. Uh, New Z um, American dollars, yeah. American dollars, yeah, American that's dollars. correct. Uh, and that includes all the trip inclusions that are listed on our site. And on top of that, they have to pay for the visa. Um, so the Australian visa is roughly about $350, about $350. The New Zealand visa, a visa um, is about half of that. Uh, so it's, it's a bit cheaper than the New Zealand one. And then on top of that, they've got flights and insurance, which they range from time of year, where which package they, they book. So... We can't give average costs on that, but the trip package is just under $2,000 uh, and so, the visa um, is a couple of hundred dollars depending on which, if they go to Australia or New Zealand. That's funny that uh, the cost of the visa did not change that much in 10 years because I went to Australia in 10 yeah. years and I think I paid $340. It's like 20 yeah. bucks extra in 10 years time. So it's, it's pretty affordable yeah. actually. It's pretty affordable. It did, definitely. And the good thing about Australia, I think Australia is probably one of our, our, our most popular countries, just because the way of life in Australia is is amazing. The yeah, the weather's amazing. good, the weather's good, especially up in Queensland all year round. The way of life is so friendly there. It's one of the highest paid minimum wages in the world as well, where it's it's, it's above uh, of a minimum of twenty dollars per hour. So they did do it on a really good wage, just on a, a minimum wage job and. That's why I said earlier on, a lot of our travellers say, I'll go for four months, see how it goes, and then they end up staying there the whole two years just because, as you know, you can fit the whole of Europe in, in Australia. Australia is such a massive a country. Massive country. There's, there's so much to see and do, and we've got partners. all Commonly the East Coast, that's where most of our travellers go. Um, they start off in the Gold Coast where our office is based, uh, and then they work their way around, around Australia. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, yeah, I saw on your uh, website as well that you provide accommodation for the first four days, is that right? Yeah, 
So we, yeah, we, we picked them up from the airport uh, and we put them up for their first four nights accommodation. So it's just for them to settle in, meet some of the other travellers. They come into the, our office on their second day, um, especially in Australia. So they'll come into our office, they meet the team. We help them with setting up their bank account. We set up their tax phone number um, and they meet other travellers as well. We want to ensure that they get over their jet lag, get over their nerves, meet some other travellers. Um, we offer some amazing tours during that first week just so they can experience Australia, go on a night out, go to a wildlife sanctuary, check out the Great Barrier Reef. So we give them as much fun as possible. Um, and then after that first week, they usually then make their way to their job opportunity. And all now, of this is included in a working holiday trip, yeah? Yeah, it's all included in our package. Uh, now, some of our partners don't provide staff accommodation. Um, if they don't, we will assist our travellers with helping them find permanent accommodation. But nine out of ten times, our travellers put down as a preference. They would rather a job opportunity that provides staff accommodation. So as long as they're open-minded to job preference and location, we can usually help them um, get an opportunity that provides staff accommodation, which is just so much easier because they live where they work, they save money, exactly. uh, and it's just easier. That's something that I think is really important for people who want to apply for a visa. As you said, that it will cost uh, just under $2,000, and they need to know that when they come to Australia, the cost of living in Australia is pretty expensive, especially for accommodation. Yep. Even though you want to stay, let's say, in a, in a backpacker in Australia, it's going to cost you at least 30 Australian dollars a night. The food is yeah. going to cost you as well quite a lot of money. So the $2,000, yeah. you're going to spend $2,000 very quickly. Very, very 100%. 100%. I think we, find, we get this all the time. Yeah, the time exactly. that you find someone who's going to employ you and find out your accommodation by yourself, that's a nightmare. I, I went there in Australia and I spent at least two months before to find a, a proper accommodation. And I spent more than two thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think people don't realise it's it's not as as easy as you think. So for That's example, uh, a lot of people don't realise that on the working holiday visa to Australia, you legally have to change employers every six months. So from an employer's perspective, a lot of the time they don't want to hire a backpacker who's living in a hostel who is. Is going to have to leave after six months. Who who probably isn't reliable because they yeah. they only want a few weeks of paycheck. So with us, we just save our travellers so much stress, so much time. We get them in yeah. fun job opportunities where they're working with other travellers, and you can only get this visa once. You said yourself you, you went there, and 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 when you arrive in Australia, the weather's good. Everyone in the hostel is partying. You're not going to stay in hand in CVs. You're going to be spending money. And, and money goes so quickly when so you're quickly. paying for your own food, rent. You're not, you don't have a stable income. So with us, they, they save so much time, money, and stress. And even after the first contract, the, the idea of knowing that we can travel for six weeks, eight weeks, and when I'm ready, Global will organize me another interview in maybe a different part of Australia, so that's that sense of security, not just when they arrive, but throughout the whole two years. And one of the main benefits of why people use Global is we have a 24 seven support line. So not just for nice. travelers, but for their parents as well. So parents always call us, they're nervous about their kids or their kids don't answer them. You'd be surprised. This is not just 18, 19 year olds. This is 29 year olds, 30 year olds <laughs> that have never, never traveled and, and their parents are, are nervous. So. We're always there to help them. We're not there to baby them, but we're there to help them ensure that they have the best experience and they make the most of these once in a lifetime visas. Awesome. So we almost come to the end of our little interview. And can you tell us why people should take a global and a work and travel and not another company? Why should go with you? Yeah, great question. I, I think I, I covered. A, a bit just on, on the last on the last question, but it really depends on what the customer's looking for. If the customer's looking for security, uh, support all the way through, and they want to work and earn money to support themselves, fun job, short term seasonal, then we're definitely the right company. We pre organize everything before they leave, and we're, we're an Australian company. We've got 
three offices worldwide. We've sent over 57,000 travelers. We've got over 10,000 four to five star reviews. So we know, we know what, what we're doing what and doing. what we're doing is right. We, we offer a premium service and we're one stop shop where we help from start to finish. And especially with the pandemic now, I think more and more people are reaching out to us because they, they want that extra security that they've struggled over the last year. Uh, and I think everyone has struggled over the last year and they want to travel now that the world's opening up and they don't want to risk going to the other side of the world and not being able to get a job or not being able to find accommodation and having to come back home. So if you want to ensure that everything's organized before you leave, then definitely go, go through us. Something very important to mention as well is you have weekly discounts on your website. So I saw that uh, last week you had like $200 discount. It's a, it's a really good deal. And as well, Definitely. you can mention them that if they come on my website, I will offer them an extra $50 discount. I will put the link on the, on the description below for you. So you can get up to $250 to go on your next um, working holiday trip. So it's, it's really good. Definitely. Yeah, we have limited availability and we're constantly having to push our intakes or more people book so everyone that registers they just have to pay a small deposit um, obviously you've got your promotion code that you can offer to customers that want to book and, and get an extra discount and one thing I mentioned as well that every deposit with us has a lifetime guarantee so it is really flexible if the customers over the next six months need a bit more time to save up we can always push the trip back so it's complete flexibility um, and we've got a team here to, to help them step by step so if they have any questions they can come to our website. We've got a live chat service. Some will be able to answer all their questions or they can book an appointment online and someone can call them and answer any questions they may have. Yeah. You can also leave a comment on, in the description below. And I think that if you see the, the video, you can maybe answer them back or you can contact me. I will contact Ross. And definitely. we definitely help you with your, uh, to process your working holiday the trip. Yeah. Like I said, we're always here to help. I've, I've been here for seven years. So if they have any questions, they can ask you, Roman. They can ask us on the live chat or on the comment. And yeah, we'll be more than happy to help. Yeah. It was very nice to meet you, Ross. I hope that we uh, covered it all for you guys. And um, don't forget to subscribe and to hit the notification bell. See you guys. Yeah, it was lovely speaking to you as well, Roman. Bye. Bye.